We're going to be going over the history of the Phoenix Coyotes transition into the Arizona Coyotes, the new reverse retro jacket. Yes, we had to put that on. Biz tried to steal it. Well, he's, he special, you know, special orders here. This guy gets them first and then it trickles down. So I'll probably see mine next year when they're not <laughs> even uh, around anymore. Uh, but what better guy to have us, uh, to have here, excuse me, talk about the history of the Coyotes. And fitting enough, we're doing it. This is the first ever game at, at now Gila River Arena. What was the name back then? Jobbing.com. December of like 2003, I think. Like right, it was like December 30th. We had a big party afterwards. It was fun, we had a good time. Let's go back to when the team ended up moving here. What was that first year like where all of a sudden you go from being in Winnipeg to where it's sunshine out the whole year round coming to the rink and just getting used to a new place to play hockey. It was unbelievable in the fact that we were right downtown. Uh, it, was, it was new and everyone was at the games. It was packed. The seats at the one end, because it was built for basketball, at the time it was called America West Arena. And it was at the one end, the hangover came right over top of the goalie's net. So like, Happy Bullen was our goalie at the time. When he looked up, there was like a concrete roof, like 12 feet, 10, 12 feet above the net. <laughs> like it wasn't that high above the net. And so if you were sitting in the, like in up there and you looked down, the closest you could see was like the top of the circles. So if you were at the top, you couldn't, you really you couldn't, couldn't see, see what was past, You couldn't see past like the red blue line. And in the first couple exhibition games, we didn't have netting up. So you actually went ne never out of sight because you would never come yeah, back. Yeah, I would never come yeah, back. Yeah, you'd never back in zone. So if, if, if you were coming to watch Donor, it wasn't that yeah, bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. you just hang The Donor up. fan club up top. Actually, if you were coming at that time, I was sitting on the bench. Okay, <laughs> that's true, yeah. So you'd just look over to the bench. Oh, he's still sitting there. So. With that pretty young face Oh, he is. yeah. But wait, wait, tell, tell about when you came. I came over and it, you know, it took me a, a few weeks to finally get settled in, but it just, it sucked from it not going and, and being as comfortable as it was going to the rink. As yeah. in you come in and you just got to be the guy who shuts up. And I mean, we both know that that, <laughs> that didn't really happen either way. Uh, but, but it was cool. It, it, it seemed like there was this new energy because Tip had just came yeah. in. It was his first year. And we just had this awesome leadership group. And, and I think that everybody really gelled really quickly off the top. We were kind of just bonded together as this group of mis misfits. Yep. And, you know, for the first three years I was here, we ended up making playoffs. But, you know, overall it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was probably the, 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 the best five years of my career when I spent it here. It was so much fun. The thing that I remember is, like, you need, you need personality, I think, to be really... We had so much. And, and we had, we had the personality of guys that really kind of gelled and fit together and it was, oh my. it was so much fun. Four or five years in a row now. I'm here with uh, City Slicker, Shane Doan, the, you know, and uh, the pride and joy of Boston, Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Massachusetts. Keith Yandel. Another big component uh, to making that big run when we did was uh, adding Ray Whitney. And talk about a guy who played in all these different eras with all these different people. Uh, Legends of the game. I, I, I think it was him, Marty Hansel, and Verby. And, and Verby. They were unbelievable. That, Verby, Verby, like he had that same move that my son tried all the time. That little pump to his back end upstairs, and it worked so well. Second, we actually, you actually said second he got, best shootout player in uh, Coyotes history, other than Adrian Coyne, yeah. of course. You actually said he got verbata. Didn't you say we got verbata this year? T Tyson Nash said that. Yep. He's he's the main guy. Yeah, but I thought you I thought you did it after the game. I just but... come on and play cleanup. Okay, All right, but well. he uh, but like talk about like having other other veterans around that well, year. That year, like we had Derek Morris, Adrian Acoin, uh, Rosie, Michael Roosevelt, and then obviously Ray, and then it was like just a veteran group of guys that uh, we had so much fun with that group. You running, you and Yans running the dressing room with the music and. The dancing before, after games, and yeah, we had, we're, and then and then actually, you guys introduced the heavyweight championship belt as the player of the game because right. of, of Yanza's, Jason LaBarbera, 
and donors love for wrestling. Yes, we and actually had the actual guy that makes the WWE belts make the belt for us. It was <laughs> sick. Another great leader here. Another example, excuse me. Uh, you paid out of pocket with Yans to get the belt. Yeah. Is it still, where is it now? Who owns it? I don't know where it is. I know Jason LaBarbera, I think, might have had it, might not have. I think it might be in the room still. Well, Coyotes fans, thank you very much for joining us. Shane Doan, Paul Bissonette, the history of the Arizona Coyotes. We'll see you soon.